Welcome back, everybody. Seattle is, of course, the coffee capital of the world, or at least the United States. But I am only a very recent convert to the magical beverage. Last month in Italy, I tried a taste of my husband's cafe macchiato, and for the first time, it actually rocked my world. And since then, I've been doing deep research, trying to recreate that experience at home. So here to help us learn to make the perfect espresso is Gail Williams from Seattle Coffee Gear, which I truly enjoyed. Um, so. It was the first time I'd ever had coffee that didn't have a bitter aftertaste. Right. Uh, that has a lot to do with the beans themselves, how they're roasted, uh, the grinder that you're using, the mm -hmm. machine you're using. All of that adds up. Temperature is real important. You've got to brew your coffee at the right temperature, 195 to 204. Fresh beans, if you don't have fresh beans, you won't get that nice crema that you get on the Which espresso. is a little caramel, foamy yes. stuff on the top, yep. which is delicious. And it just won't taste as good. And really, you don't have to have those really dark, oily beans. That's some of the bitter as well. Which I didn't know. I just assumed right. that espresso was made from those, but yep. the oily beans actually clog up your grinder and don't yep. taste as good. They don't taste as good, and that's just an over-roasted bean. And it, it, some people love it, and that's fine. You know, whatever works. But without that you just don't i've always liked coffee flavor like for ice yeah. cream and that kind of stuff i just didn't like coffee but i'd never had one like that so, so you're a convert i am and it's so great <laughs> to discover you love something late in life and you're going whoo a whole new yeah. world of, of <laughs> coffee so let's talk about how to do this at home so we aren't yep. spending tons of money yes. you know over the course of a lifetime and we can figure out how to make this to sure. our own taste so there's a there's a wide variety of price points and different kind of different kinds of machines that you can get into this is a semi-automatic where you're doing more of the work yourself mm -hmm. there's the tamping the grinding the whole thing and then over here we have a super automatic from Seiko and that is a machine you push a button out comes the coffee and it does it and it's moderately priced you know you don't have to spend a fortune if you are a tinkerer, this is probably going to be more up your alley because you're going to get better shots with this type of machine than you are with a totally uh, automated machine. And you can get those that do the milk automatically as well, too. Oh, that's so. amazing. Okay, and then so there's everything, you know, just pour over, All but that, that's not which espresso. Is cool. It's not necessarily espresso, no, but it is but something it's really good. that's very good and inexpensive. Yep. And even in the little place we were renting um, in Italy, they had they have several. That, yeah. uh, Yep. pour overs they like those yep. so let's talk about why grinding is important uh, the consistency of the grounds is very important for getting the correct shot uh, you're looking for a double shot which is two ounces to be poured in about 20 to 30 seconds if it's coming out too fast that means it's too coarse you want to make it a little finer and it's all in conjunction with the tamp and the whole process that you're doing so the correct grinder is equally as important as the correct machine fresh beans, right temperature, all of those things add up to the good drink at the end of the day it's or the morning. Yes, or the morning yep. or whenever you're going to do it. You yep. want to give us a demo? Sure. Let's take a look at how yep. this all works. So bear with me here. We're doing this backwards. Yes, because the, the, this, the machine this, is pointing that way. Yep. Can we talk first of all about the beans? Because one of the things I read is that it's great to have a blend that has different tasting notes, sort of like right. wine. Uh, your roaster will play around with different types of beans from different regions of the world until uh, that roaster gets what they think is just the right blend. And mm -hmm. certain uh, beans stand up to the process of making espresso better than others. So the blend is probably going to have, uh, you know, beans that are good for that. And then there's other beans that are better for drip and pour over. So let me stop stop talking yep. about that for a second. Let's let everybody see what you did. So the grounds came in and yep. they're um, fairly fine. Yep, and I, I leveled it off and yep. I've already dialed this grinder into this machine so we're gonna get the proper shot. You know, the, the timing I was talking about, that 20 to 30 seconds. And then and you then used you the tamper. Used the tamper, yeah. And I saw you kind of twist it at the end. That's called polishing. And you wanna get it as level as you can. If you don't get it level, it's going to come out of one spout more than the other. It'll and just kind of go through the grounds in a funky way unless yep. you get it nice yep. and level. And okay. today it'll probably go funky on me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's and see. then also we're going to steam milk. So you want to purge, purge the uh, condensation out of the steam arm. I'm going to Turns get out steam milk is pretty good just all by itself. Steam milk is really good. Ooh. So I'm not going to do both functions at the same time, but okay. this machine you can. And that's only because it's going to be awkward. 
Okay, so we're actually putting steam into the milk, and it needs to boil around, or, or it, it, yeah, what's it, the word it, for that it gets, when it's whirlpool? It gets it whirlpool or oh, rotation, okay. whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and what that does is I'm breaking the surface, and you're hearing that little slurping noise. Yep. That's pulling the air in and making the micro foam bubbles. And the swirling around is simply keeping those bubbles incorporated into the, where is it? into the uh, milk itself which is delicious and if you don't do that yep. uh, so yeah I'm, I'm testing my milk to see if it's right yeah. by just putting my palm on the bottom is that correct that's it and or you can use a thermometer yeah, uh, no. you want your milk to be between 140 and 170 once okay. after that it's scalded all right but I'm good with my hand yeah yeah, I haven't messed you, up the milk yet. When you can't hold your hand there, and for uh, espresso, you actually want, if you want to do um, latte art, you don't want as much foam. Oh, and you want it a little cooler as well. So why are you swirling it? I'm incorporating the foam that might have come up to the surface mm -hmm. back into the milk. Into the milk. Okay, yep. very good. Pressure's on. Pressure is on. Oh, look at it. Beautiful. So that's the crema on top. Can we see that? I know it's kind of hard to do. Hold it right there. So the, the stuff that just looks that's like the a crema. caramel color Ooh, foam on the top is the crema. And, and why is that important? Uh, that indicates that it's a fresh, co fresh coffee. That if you don't get the crema on the top, you won't have any. Uh, I mean, if you, do, if you don't have the crema, you have stale coffee. Okay. That's where I was so going you know, with that. Don't do it. Oh, look at you with the uh, art. Look at the leaf. Show off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now you put more milk in yours than I do in mine. Does it matter? It's just preference. It's whatever you do. I was just like. filling the cup kind of a thing in yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So Can taste I take that. A, a sip? Absolutely. Tell us also, this is one of the Acme cups, those the porcelain the, cups. Exactly. That, um, the, the, my Italian friend said definitely do that. Why does that matter? Um, for lattes, it's definitely a wider cup at the top and shallower. Yeah, <laughs> that's just, uh, go ahead, keep talking. Yeah, no, I'm good, I'm good. It's just a shape for lattes, it's typically uh, shorter and squattier, and then a demi tasse cup is just a small one ounce cup, and then uh, for cappuccino, it would be a smaller cup, a little taller. And those things from the macchiato, which is the espresso and, and a little bit of milk, yep. then there's, cappuccino, the rest of it is... Cappuccino is mostly just foam on the top that you mm -hmm. would actually spoon off. A wet cappuccino, you'd put a little bit of the milk with the foam on the top. And I, a latte? A latte is like this, more milk, uh, one-third milk, one-third coffee, and one-third foam. And so when you buy your machines, you get those recipes and you can start playing with them, right? Yeah, you can watch our YouTube videos too. We have you a lot of stuff. You guys have the best stuff. videos that, where you go through making things and showing us. Yep. And also in your um, store, we can come in and kind Absolutely. of look at everything and, and even taste. And what we're all about is pairing you up with the proper gear that's going to work for you. This, at the price point you want. At the want. price point. I mean, it's everything from about $150 right on up for an espresso machine. And you can spend 10000 if you want to. I did not do that, by the way. <laughs> I did not. I found something that fit my budget, and I'm, I, I'm getting better at it. And that's right. what it's all about. Very good. So I love that there's a place where we can learn. There are videos mm -hmm. that we'll link to online. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to enjoy the heck out of that over the commercial break. Up next, how animals can teach us a thing or two about human nature. Back after this. Gil, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Too.